In this video, I want to give you some tips on how to use this course. Now, if you can already program in some programming language, you can probably skip this video. But if you're an absolute beginner with programming, I would say this is probably the most important video in the entire course. So please don't skip it. In my experience, progress with learning programming looks something like this curve. So we've got time spent learning on the x-axis and progress on the y-axis here. And what I'm trying to say with this is that as with learning many other things, I think initially you can feel like you're not making progress. But if you keep practicing, eventually it starts to get together and then you make much more rapid progress. So don't be discouraged if initially programming seems confusing because it seems confusing at first to nearly everyone. I can still remember spending a lot of time trying to understand what a variable was exactly. And that's a pretty basic concept as we'll see. So expect to be confused at the beginning, but if you keep practicing, things will come together and eventually you'll get on a roll and you'll make great progress. I strongly recommend you type out all the code you see for yourself. I know that this is boring, but it will really help you to learn it. And when you've typed it out, experiment with it a little bit. So see if you can change it in some kind of a meaningful way without breaking the program. And if you do break it, you can just go back to the previous version. But if you experiment with the code you've typed out, you can confirm or refute your ideas about it, find out whether you've really understood it or not. And you need to prioritize practicing rather than memorizing. I've seen people trying to learn programming, making loads of notes, lots and lots of notes. And I'm not saying you can't do that if you really want to, but I think the key to learning programming really is in the practice. Beginner programmers sometimes look at the amount of stuff that they feel they've got to learn and they think, how am I going to remember all that? And the answer is, well, you don't really consciously have to try to memorize things. All you have to do is practice things. Even professional programmers forget things all the time. But these days we just look it up on Google or wherever. And that's very fast if you're a practiced programmer. So you really have to see this as something that is very much about practicing. You've got to type out stuff. You've got to experiment with it. You can't learn programming just by watching videos. Videos can only be a source of information, but it's like learning the piano. For example, you can't learn to play a piano by watching a video. You have to practice. And if you put the effort in at the beginning, there's quite a high chance that pretty soon you'll start to find programming addictive. It is fascinating to type instructions to a computer and then see it actually carry out those instructions. So it's not going to be hopefully just one long dreary slog, but you have to put that practice in. And at the beginning, it can feel a bit like hard work, but once you get over that, you're going to be flying. So always remember, you've got to be typing code out, experimenting with it, seeing what you can do with it. And if you do that, then your skills will actually stead steadily improve even if at the very start, you don't feel that they are improving. When you write a program, I strongly recommend you approach it like this. So you type out a few lines of code or at the beginning, even just one line, you run it to see if it actually works. And you can also in the lingo, we say print out, but I mean display the values of what we call variables to see if they are what you expect. Now this is going to make more sense later on, but I will repeat this advice later on. And once you've done that, you add another bit of code and you run it again and you see if it still works and so on. So the takeaway message here that I want to give you is don't just write a whole big program and then cross your fingers and hope that it works. You've got to write it a little bit at a time run it, see if it works. Then if it does work, add a little bit more to it and so on. It's like an incremental thing rather than writing a whole load of code and running it and finding it doesn't work and throwing up your hands in despair. 
Over the years, people have often asked me whether they should learn to touch type. Touch type means typing without looking at the keyboard. So you put your hands in a position known as the home position, and then without looking at the keyboard, you can type fairly quickly. You don't need to check where the keys are. I think about half of computer programmers touch type. So you absolutely do not have to learn to touch type, even to be a world-class programmer. However, I do think it's a good thing if you do want to learn it. If you look up touch typing on Google or your favorite search engine, you can find lots of free programs online that will teach you how to touch type. And it's not a long process. It takes maybe a few weeks or even maybe just days to learn where all the keys are. And once you've done that, it's a matter of forcing yourself to touch type when you write emails or tweets or whatever. So touch typing is something you can learn pretty easily and it will help you, but it's not necessary. I do touch type myself, mostly, for the most part. There are some keys I have to look up because I'm always using different keyboards, slightly different keyboards in different languages. My mother was actually an expert touch typist and she recommended to me really early on in my life that you should learn to touch type, even though back then we had massive steel typewriters and not computers. And I do feel it stood me in good stead because it makes the work of typing out code a lot less boring because you can do it much faster. It seems less of a chore and that means you're more inclined to practice and practice is what it all comes down to. So I definitely recommend this. If you even spend just 10 minutes a day with a touch typing program online, there are lots of free ones. I think it's a really valuable thing to do. And apart from anything else, it looks impressive. People always imagine that programmers can touch type. Probably half of us can't, but you automatically look more professional just from being able to touch type. I'm gonna give you lots of exercises in this course. They are completely optional. I would not want you to start an exercise and then think this is too hard and then give up the course because the exercise is hard. Really, the exercises are just suggestions for how you might practice. The vital thing is that you do practice. You've got to be writing these programs for yourself and playing around with them. Exactly how you do that is completely up to you. And I will give you suggested exercises, but they are literally just suggestions. They're not things that you absolutely have to do to get through the course. And I provide them just because some people really feel lost. They feel like they don't know what they would do to practice. And so they have asked me to include exercises in my courses and that's why the exercises are here but if you can think of ways to experiment yourself to play around with the code then in some ways that's even better you can make up your own practice exercises many people have asked me if they can get a job with programming so can they start to learn programming not knowing anything and then get a job with it now i started putting together a course on Java programming something like 10 years ago now and many people have followed that course and then got a job as a Java programmer. So the answer is absolutely yes. You can just start from scratch. You can learn programming and get a job with it and that is what I did myself. I decided to make this course on Python now because I think if anything now is really at the cutting edge of programming. It's probably now more Python than, than Java, I have to admit. There are still plenty of jobs around with Java and other languages. They're not gonna go away. But in some ways, Python is now where it's at. Although it does depend exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Some programming languages are better for some tasks than other things. And Python is a great general purpose language you can totally get jobs with Python, of course, if there are jobs in your area or somewhere you can go and live. You can look on online job sites to see what jobs there are with Python around you. Programming jobs often have just an unreasonable number of skills listed in them. 
but that won't stop you getting a job if you're persistent. The fact is that there are a lot of employers out there complaining about skill shortages, looking for Python programmers. And if you can learn Python acceptably well, which you can if you practice it, then you can get a job with Python if there are jobs anywhere near you. So the answer to this is yes. So with that said, let's get into the whole business of actually writing Python programs. This is a free video from my course, Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners. I'm releasing the first couple of chapters of this course completely for free on YouTube to get you started with Python. I plan to upload new videos here to YouTube every Monday and every Thursday for at least a couple of months. If you're interested in the complete course, which teaches you Python from scratch and eventually progresses to things like creating graphical user interfaces and using neural networks, principal component analysis, cluster analysis, all that stuff, and much more besides, then you can find a link in the description or just go to this URL on the screen right here. If you finish the whole course, you'll be able to write all kinds of general purpose programs in Python and use Python to do machine learning and artificial intelligence as well. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy coding.